Don't you know that the music should be solemn? Happy birthday to you. Tootsie. Happy birthday to you. Is it 644? Happy birthday to 644. <laughs> He's 644. Hey, we're recording this on your actual birthday. It is Sunday. It's not Wednesday because of our no. schedules. Did you press record for that little sing song that you I just did? did? Well, look at you, Juicy Pants. How much love do I have for you? You know me. You've known me for a long time. I, I, I prefer other people's birthdays than my own. I don't know why, but I just yeah. do. I'm but the same. thank you, little brother. And I can't yeah. wait. You're June, right? You're June. I'm June. I'm not a birthday guy. Um, I well, avoid just it. Get ready for it because we'll be doing a podcast and I'll be singing back to you. And I can pretty much tell you that between the two of us, one of us did West Side Story and one of us didn't. When it was me. To, you know, <laughs> but thank you. No, I don't. There's no acapella. There's no <laughs> none, of the, none of the stuff that you're supposed to do when it comes to the art of singing. I did not do. I was dramas all around. Um, no, you know, I'm I'm like you. Uh, I've never been a big birthday person. Like never. You know, M Megan, my wife, Mego is Ooh. crazy about it. Yeah, she'll celebrate. For Texas weeks. man, she'll celebrate all they day, all it. week, all month, all, all week, all month. You know, Mona loves the birthday stuff. You know, the people that are closest to me. I have never been. A birth, like I literally avoid it when if usually I'm on set or something and people will be like, it's your birth. I'm like, no, 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 don't say anything. No, please don't. Um, you, re you, remember, the, you, you, re you remember though, in Sons of Anarchy, you would all because mine was never when we were filming, mine always per was. Pearls was never when we were filming, yours always was. Mm. So once we started to figure out when your birthday was, you had no shot at not being <laughs> celebrated, and also. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even the boys. It was the crew. Yeah. Remember the shit that they would get for you? The, the hats. The, the cupcakes, the hats, the... Yeah. We'd have to, like, sing it for you. And you would just... Can't. 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 I get so... I just... As weird as this sounds being an actor, this sounds so strange. I don't like attention. <laughs> I know, man. I feel you. Isn't that weird? Like, nope. I just don't like attention. Not to you and me. Not, it's not weird to you and me, Staten Island. No. Both our cities start with an S. Saskatoon, yeah, Staten Sask Island. Saskatoon, okay. Saskatchewan, okay. Staten. Who cares? I don't like attention. It doesn't mean that I love to act. I love performing. I just don't like attention. Now, I must say, and you do this as well, if not better than me, and that is, you know, like on Twitter today, I can't, I've got to, you know, like you get every day, like I get every day. There's thousands. It's just, I can't, I can't respond. But yeah. I did say thank you. And I appreciate all the love that you and I get on your birthday and mine we and we do we but yeah we can uh i'd rather celebrate yours and you'd rather celebrate mine it's kind of cool. yeah they did videos for you they did hey, what a, a, a videos a lot of videos were made oh no yeah there was pictures of you as, no. a, as a youth as, as a, youth, a youth as a, as youth, a youthful kim coach two youths two youths oh, yeah no where do they yeah. find that stuff Theo? i where don't do know you? but i gotta tell you you look young and robust in those pictures <laughs> i just want to know if i have hockey skates on do i have skates on i, I wonder. think you do maybe in one i know i know there's a lot that your shirt's open you seem to have your oh. shirt open a lot not anymore yeah. not anymore no no when you're 63 no. i know i look a lot younger wow that's uh, I, mean, I was gonna say 36 look at that they can't even see you. They're seeing me. You got to talk when you come to the screen. Okay, so I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk. There you go. Talk. There we go. There yeah. we go. There we go. <laughs> hey, good news for everyone who's listening to this. Yep. Um, we've 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 heard the voices. So very soon, um, Kim Coates will have a microphone and a camera. Now that he's in one location for a minute, maybe, and um, it's coming soon. So he's going to have a whole new audio visual setup. So for the 16 people that consistently <laughs> continue to write you continue to write about the audio the just audio. know it's, it's coming guys it's coming in a world of patience it's i'm spending it all i'm spending, spending it, all. it all no i am i'm gonna have double mask on shield on go and buying all this shit it's all coming I'm buying it it's all He's gonna have a whole reviews, crew baby. a whole crew in the house whole yeah crew. so you know uh 
that's what's going on right now. Um, How's our podcast doing, Theo? Like, how are we I doing? I can't believe it. Like, what is happening? I can't. I can't. It's so Come amazing. Come on, share and with I the really world, bro. Step it up. Every week, every week it gets bigger and bigger. Every week it gets better and better. I have all these different plans of things we're going to do. Obviously, from I'm trying to really convince these guys to do a new apparel drop. You know, we're doing the thing where we're bringing on a guest once a month. You're getting new equipment. Yeah. You know, um, we're off the charts talk, now. We're off. Yeah, the we're charts. talking to other companies about bringing stuff in. Another thing I'm going to do at the end of this because I yeah. I got some hints from a. Uh, from these YouTube people, because we're one of the few podcasts that actually has a YouTube channel as well as an audio channel. And whose idea um, was um, that, by the way? I, I, you know, I think it was both of ours because they, you said no, they got to see your face. They said, mm -hmm. if you're Kim Coates, as much as your voice is mm -hmm. melodic, right? It sounds like Lionel Puts Rich. people to sleep, I've heard. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it is, it is like a binaural beats. Um, but the face, is where it's at. So I, you, I said to you months ago last year, I said, if you think for one audio. second, I need the video. If you don't think people aren't going to want to see your pretty little face with that beautiful smile of yours and my long hair and my blue eyes, you're crazy. Boom shakalaka. That's what and we hear. And look, and now I have long hair. That's what video does. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it does to you. You got to grow your hair. Got to grow your hair. You got to. Um, <laughs> No, but one of the things that they were saying, and I've noticed this because, you know, now that I've been on this location for like, whatever it is, six weeks, six years, I don't know how long I've been in this hotel, but, but um, what I've noticed is at the end of YouTube videos, they're like, subscribe, like, and they put up all these tabs, subscribe and like, and I guess that it helps your YouTube algorithm. So sorry for the audio people listening to this, but right now, while you're watching this, you can do it while you're watching, subscribe to the channel and yeah. like this video. Yeah. And, um, and then apparently better things happen for us. So all that being said, Mr. Birthday Coats, um, mm -hmm. let's get into this episode called Better Half. Why and why, why? Okay. Well, it's season one, Why? episode 10. Yeah. We had already done nine. So we did one skip to get to this because we're trying to close out seasons. So we're going to close out season one. We'll have a guest on, not next week, the week after. Correct. Next okay. week, we're going to talk about who it's going to be. Exciting shit. Okay. No, I, I, I meant more. Why was it called better half? Not why are we doing 10? Okay. So I'm going to guess. Yeah, please. It has to do with Tara. It has to do with Cherry, uh, a.k.a. Rita. It has know, to do with... Great. I forgot about that. Yeah, me too. Totally. If it has to do with everyone, this seems to be a spotlight of relationships, this episode. C certainly, certainly the Opie Donna that came in big, big spades in this episode. Otto, Otto, uh, sure. you know, that... The, sure, Luann. Luann. No, you're right, bro. That's it. Yeah. So that's my guess. The better half. No, it is. That's exactly um, right. It doesn't change the fact that I thought it was not a great episode. And I understand that sometimes in TV writing, and, and I know TV writing is different than film writing, that you need setup episodes, right? We know those when we would read them. We'd be like, this is setting something up. Um, it's not... I, I, there are definitely parts I liked about this episode. Here's the first thing I'll say. I did not remember... And I know I say this a lot and I feel weird saying it. I don't, I didn't remember any of this. Now I know why I'm not in the episode. Okay. So spoiler, as you're probably about to watch this, uh, Juice isn't in it. Last time we saw Juice, he was with Cammy. but you have some incredible moments in this episode and thank God for them because they are the best parts of the episode. Well, I'm not I, saying I, that. Thank you. But I, I have to say there is only one part about this whole episode that I remember and it has to do with me and Piney and we'll get into it when it, when it yep. comes up, but I, I, I think you're right, but I, I want to add to that. I'm not sure this is like a setup episode. What it is, it's a coming down episode, meaning the two previous episodes, two before this, where it was the killing of Cone, mm -hmm. that was just epic. Crazy. And almost shooting epic. a play and me saving him and the Irish. Yeah. Crazy episode. Then last episode, number nine, you had your fingers so far up Cammy's you know what. Yeah, hysterical. You and Tommy were, and then Tara comes into the 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 the, the church and and helps save him. It's it was an incredibly heart thumping, 
funny episode. Yeah. So now it's like, let's take a breather. We're going to have a breather. And I got to tell you, Mary Van Peebles directed this episode. And, you know, I wasn't, I didn't have that many days on it, but I, I don't, re, I don't remember the, I don't, I just don't remember the episode. Well, visually, I loved it. Yeah. Um, he did, he did some things in this episode that I absolutely love. Now I'm a huge awesome. fan of awesome. uh, yeah, we, Mario yeah. Van Peebles. Um, I, I was actually upset that I didn't get to work with him. He, what I, what he did, see, Sons had a mold. We were still finding kind of what our look 100%. was and what our, what our, what our style was for lack of Correct. a better word. And that's hard in TV because the director almost has to come in and do plug and play where they're like, okay, what's the style? What kind of shots do they do? They do two shots, single, single, boom, boom, boom. They do motorcycle, they run out. He, uh, interestingly enough, took some chances that we didn't usually do. And there's one that I'm gonna point out pretty specific. Good. So um, it, it opens up with Sack rolling up on that white bike. I always remember that bike because uh, it was so it, different from all it, of ours. It was, it was perfect for him. It wasn't too big. It didn't overwhelm him, but it looked different. It was a different style, and it was perfect, perfect half sack. Yeah, and then, uh, and then we go right into the chaos of that porn studio raid. And, you know, again, it always reminds me how uh, big of a character the man was, you know, and the, and the porn stuff had been there from the beginning, and that really – uh, up until Cara Cara, Jimmy Smith, that, that's seven years of porn stuff that we were around. So while the guns were always associated, Sam Crow with guns, Sam Crow is also super associated with the porn world. Once we got um, into it, yeah, once we got into it, 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 uh, it became pretty big for us. It actually helped pay for our coffee and donuts for sure. Yeah. So, okay. So the porn studio, then Jackson Opia working on bikes. This is so funny when I see people working on bikes. We've talked about this before. I, 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 they have yeah, no I, idea what they're doing. No, and, and they don't. But, it, but it's okay. It's like the scene coming up with Gemma shopping for groceries. Yeah. Like, is, I'm telling you right so, now that if they let you and I shop for groceries, I'm actually going to stop the show and think, hang on a sec. I don't want to be down this aisle. I want the pork and beans aisle. Because I want pork. Like, I, but they just went, and go. And Katie did such a more. But she's just picking shit. Here's the boys working on the bike. And I'm telling you, Theo, I don't know. You thought about those Tello Moro shirts that we had to wear. But uh. I... I freaking I freaking loved them until I hated them. Like I yeah. those early years it made us feel like we fix bikes. We know everything about motorcycle engines. Not a clue. But God, yeah. it was fun to, with wrenches, always with wrenches, right? Charlie comes around the bike there and Ryan's looking at him. Anyway, it was a fun scene. Yeah, and Opie, we we have a nice little uh Opie arc on this episode. And we do right Good at this for moment. you. I'm glad you pointed yeah. that out. We do, man. We do because Opie is such a stoic character ryan in general is just a pretty stoic dude and this was a very colorful opie episode and it starts at this moment and when you see it in his eyes when he's near the bike with Jax, is opie was never meant for this life i always say juice was never meant for this life opie definitely wasn't meant for this life and there are times when you think he might be when the stuff with clay and he whatever but at this moment you could tell that he is suffering from questioning what to do he had he doesn't have a lot of options yeah, and he's just broke point. and he has two mortgage payments yeah. behind and his wife's gonna leave him and he loves his kids and what's he really doing and we just blew some people up two episodes like and they and and they say at the end of the scene they go they're not talking much right now like mm -hmm. the jack's opie thing is there's there's just they're not talking they're no. not talking and it and it shows so, so then we go, uh, man, Unser's terrific in this episode, by the way. Oh, there are a lot of glimmers yeah. in this episode. So Unser's freaking out over the ATF takeover. Right. Calling her a white bitch. Scrawny, hey, uptight scrawny bitch. Scrawny, uptight. Her. Like, yeah. Can I tell you something? I don't, I don't know if you noticed in this, in this episode. This is like the verbal uh, oh. abuse of, of stall episode. Everyone ever. calls her a no, bitch ever. at one point. Ever. ever. Donna. Yeah. Donna does. Everyone. Even Tara. Yeah. Get the fuck. It's nonstop. Like, and we're just meeting her. Not, we're yeah, just, we're meeting just meeting Agent her. Evil. And all yeah. of a sudden, we're going to get the fuck out of here, bitch. Like, yeah. is that the way you talk to police officers? Is that the way we do? I guess so. I, 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 I you know, listen, they're really, what I wrote is they're really setting her up as such a bad guy, right? So, yeah. Hale and Stahl start breaking it down in the office. They're trying to figure out how to get Rico. Um, 
growing up. Racketeer, influence, I know everything corrupt about Rico. organization. I know everything about but it. But I but I you um, don't because we certainly had to look it up. I've looked it up way before this show. I mean, yeah, I have Rico. family members, many of them Do you? convicted of Rico. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. So here's the deal. Go, Rico, man. Rico was basically created for organized crime and mafia uh, affiliations. Um, from what I know. If uh, if there's anything that I miss here, tell me. But from my experience with it, it's a way that if people who are criminals are fraternizing or there's any criminal behavior amongst the group is you can basically charge the entire group, which is uh, the whole bit of organized crime, right? The basis of organized Correct. crime is crime done by an organization. Correct. And Rico is the easiest way. Uh, what's his name? That idiot, uh, uh, the New York mayor. Gian, Gian. Julia, Giuliani. Gian, Rudy Giuliani. I can't even, Giuliani. I can't even say his name. That numb nuts. He's, uh, you know, oh back God. when he was New that York's hero. Guy. Oh yeah. my God. Back when he was New York's hero, um, before he started leaking hair dye, um, he, he um, <laughs> what a nut. Blowing every no. tire on his car. Poor guy. Every Poor every guy. tire's had blown up. Poor guy. So he um, but oil before everywhere. that, but before yeah. that, he was he was responsible well, when when I was in New York for kind of changing the landscape of New York after what went on in the eighties, and um, he was a big part of when he was the DA, the whole Rico thing and all yeah. that. So so point is, they're trying to figure this out. Um, here's something I realized because we've talked about it multiple times with the character of Hale. And we'll get to when he left the show and why he left and all that. They were obviously setting something up. Hale has a thing for Tara. Well, um, let me let, yeah, let me let me just say that I not only did I forget about this episode, I just forgot about this entire scene. I forgot about how stall for the viewers, for you and me last night when we rewatched this show or watched it for the first time. She's laying it all out. She's got all these files, all these pictures, and it comes to Tara. Good pickup there, little brother. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, Hale just goes, hey, 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 wait a minute. Yeah. What's she got to do with this? Yeah. You can't bring her in on this. And she went, oh, no, no, of course I do. Because of ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. So even though we're getting into the next few episodes before we finish season one, it's heavy, opie, heavy stall, heavy me, heavy clay, heavy Donna. Mm -hmm. This was a scene that I completely forgot about. She was laying it out for the for the all those millions of fans that we are growing with Sons of Anarchy in what she's going to do. Yeah, and again, I think that's why I'm so curious of the way it would have went because I think there might have been something with Tara and Hale down the road. Oh my God, I said the same thing. It's like the level of concern on his face when she he he just wants her left out of it. You're so right, bro. Yeah. So, I, I mean, again, and these are those things that, you know, what happened with Half Sack, it happened with Opie, it happened with all the characters that eventually left and potentially left earlier than they were supposed to, um, of what could have been. That's a really interesting thought. So now we go to the cabin. Uh, Gemma and Cammy are yeah. there. Um, Clay giving the update. Uh, there's a religious talk going down. So Sons has always been really interesting with this. Um, we present religion a lot in the show and Jem is usually the one to shut it down. And then there's times where, you know, we use that church at hospital, uh, the, the, the place. The hospital, you can go. Yeah. 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 So we've presented religion a lot on this show. It seems to be something Kurt kind of talks about. Uh, Gemma says a really funny line with those beads. That is. Well, can I, can I like, where's that? Where did I, where did I put that? I go, a funny uh, line. Yeah. Well, first of all, she talks about, you know, I, I don't believe in God. I believe in family. She says that yeah, all the time. Which we know. That's Gemma. I mean, and, that's it. And the beads, man. I mean, I went, beads. oh, my God. Yeah. It, 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 it involves a completely different visual. Yeah. So and, funny. and Cammy had no, no response to that, man. He just listened. I mean, that guy, he became a season three it's for us. Uh, and again, and again, this was that advice I gave this dude, Jamie Cammy, has no idea. Here he is three episodes in a row, season one, and just doesn't know where this character's going. And he's just, he's just along for the ride. Because remember, none of us knew what was coming up. 
No. Nobody said no. to this dude, no. Jamie, the actor playing Cammy. No. no one said to this dude, hey, by the way, in a couple of seasons, you're going to kidnap the son and go no. to Ireland. Like, no one says that. No. You're just hanging on for the ride, taking your little crumbs and going, huh, this is interesting. Where and is this doing going? doing a really good job at it. The greatest of actors, you know what they do, Theo? They listen. Mm -hmm. And then they respond. They don't act. They, that in that scene, that There's kid no was just, there was no acting going on. Here's the number two in the call sheet. Katie Seagal walking in his Gemma breasts are everywhere. That scar mm -hmm. that she had to put on every day. She comes in, he brings up God right away. She turns it into something else. And then she turns it into a, I, I would do something else with these beads. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's how the scene ends. It's like, what? I would bet you that if we if we ever and maybe we'll get Jamie you know on the show I, I love I, what, I would bet you that he would under the assumption when he leaves at the end of this episode that that was it he's we never coming back again that's what oh, I know he did that he talked about that I remember and see ya great in fact we have to wrap on Jamie yeah like you know great episode buddy so we uh, we get to stall questioning Donna. Um, I totally that. forgot about all of this. I don't. I'm so they was they started. This was a cool thing that they did. Again, I always talk about if you're gonna if you're gonna get a kill in an episode, if you're gonna if you're gonna get a kill somewhere along the line with a character, you better start you better start cashing in on getting us to know them so we care. So we care about them. So we care. So we care about them. And and I gotta I gotta ask you, Theo, like I just said my next line is I wonder when Ryan and Sprague actually knew about their flip flop of fates on this show. Do you yeah, because they're supposed to be Opie. You, you were you were hanging more with Ryan than, than I was in those yeah. early days. Did, and I remember when he came on and I just said, hey, hey, and big fan, big fan. And I knew he was only sticking around for the first season if, if, if we even got a season two. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the, the working machine of writing is changing. Do you remember when we knew? Do you remember? I, I think don't. That, yeah, I think that we, like a lot of shows at that time, did something extremely unique. So in the now world, yeah. in today's world, the yeah. way it works is you film a show and then it'll air however long later, whenever, whenever the streaming service or whoever decides to put it up. But we were filming while it was airing, right? So we were filming season one episode eight or nine while season while uh season one episode two and three are on the air right like the show's on and i think that people were responding to that opie character greatly and they you're were probably seeing right what, no you're probably yeah, they right, were man. seeing what ryan was doing they were seeing how he was creating this really great counterpart for jacks so at one point or another, they make the decision that he's not dying at the end of this at the end of the season and that in his place it's going to be his wife and you're creating this tragic character. Um, I know that I was under the same impression that Ryan was leaving. And then all of a sudden he wasn't. And I was super happy because, you know, him and I had formed a, a certain relationship. Um, I don't know. I would like to ask him the details of what changed his mind, why he didn't, you know, what, what, what did they, you know, who, what did they talk about? But I've always said this, and maybe it's the Hamlet thing. I was under the impression Ryan was going to be the last person standing in season seven. And one of the only people standing. At the end Correct. Of season seven. Correct. That's what I, th that's like, what I was that's under a, the that's assumption. That's what we all thought. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, but again, here we are back to Donna. We're building her up. We're getting to know that she is not going to tell Stahl anything. Get out of my house, bitch. So she there it is. That. Like yeah, she says that. Get, get out of my house, bitch. Second bitch. She's been called in less than Ooh. 20 minutes. Yeah. Stall. Poor stall. Poor agent. Poor stall. Yeah, yeah. She needs a drink. Um, so now we go to this Bobby Clay scene. This is an interesting scene to me. I'm going to tell you why. Again, we're only 15, 20 minutes into the episode, maybe even less. We've now seen another color of Opie. There's a little more desperation. He's asking for his pay. There's a little more. You know, he has to go. You got Clay and Bobby drinking beers in the clubhouse. Again, it's so funny the way the show changes and manifests. Bobby, again, is like the voice of reason. He's 
like the guy, he's like the concierge to Clay. He's just sitting, even though you are the sergeant in arms, Bobby was like that voice that was oh, like, hey man, you should do this. Of course it kind of, kind of went away, right? So it, it, it did go away, but and just to add to that, what you just said, I, I really like this little scene because it was super too. simple, super real, nothing going on except Opie's broke, needs some help from the club. Bobby's going to give it to him. But then it gets better when he leaves. Clay goes, what the fuck is going on? Like, I just got shot at two episodes ago. I'm in the clubhouse because I got to be here for a minute. We just handled the Alvarez Darby shit in prison the last episode. Now I've got like, where, why is the heart and the head in different places? Mm -hmm. He's got it with his stepson, Jax. He's got it with Opie now. He's got, you know, answer, we're, we're all over the map right now. And Clay, Clay's just about had it. I thought that was a really cool ending to that scene. Yeah, especially because Clay, again, is the one trying to hold it all together. There's so much going down. And here's everybody bringing their personal stuff into Correct. it. And it Correct. To me, it's like that line in Godfather, right? This is business. It's not personal. It's like, why do you guys keep bringing all this personal stuff into this? So um, Bobby's, you know, great in that scene. He's great. very calm. Um, great. Okay, we, now we go to the Tara Stahl scene. Yeah, so here, here we, we are. are. Stahl's making the rounds. Tara right away assumes this is about Cone. She, her face, all the color leaves. She is as white as her nurse coat. She is just like, uh-oh, they got me. Here they go. Yeah. And the other ATF, this is, I'm going to tell you why I love this. This is this is the director. I want you to remember that you probably don't even remember this. Stall, Tara plays her off. No, I don't know anything. I don't know whatever. Stall leaves. And this is where the direction comes in. As Stall's leaving, the other ATF agent in the hall is in mid golf swing. Love it. Just loved it. That's incredible, by the way. People have to understand how incredible that is because he's basically an extra in the scene. He has no lines. He's bringing a character to life because most golfers, and you know this as a golfer, yeah. when sitting around, they're just doing their swing, right? All the time. Incredible direction or whoever. Little came up with additions that. of no lines. But don't just be standing like a piece of, what would you, I might be swinging a golf club. It's beautiful. And also that guy, God, I wish I knew his name. Such a good guy. He, he was in so many scenes with, with Allie. I'll, I'll look him up for the next time, but he's, he did a great job with Allie. And do you remember what Allie said before she left the office with Tara? She goes, and now you're at St. Rednecks. Mm -hmm. Like St. Rednecks. Like, I mean, you went from San Diego to Chicago, and now you're back at St. Rednecks. I mean, the verbiage that Allie comes up with the funny sexual innuendos through the, and the way show. she hits it. She oh, hits them too. God. So now here's where this comes for the direction and stepping out of the sun's mold. Okay, good. I'm glad you're bringing this up. Okay. Jax comes in yeah. slow motion. Yeah, no, beautiful. And he's smiling and beautiful. it's in slow motion and With it's so cinematic. With, so cinematic, and that's Mario Van Peebles. And and and, we, and you remember there was a weird music under yeah. that we've never used before nor after. No. There was a weird musical interlude used with that slow motion that just worked so well for both. I of them. I, I absolutely loved, loved it. it, and I was like, oh man, that's stuff we really could have kept like throughout the years. Like what a what a cool choice. And maybe hey, you know what? I'm not crazy enough to know. Maybe that's why he never directed the show again. Maybe he just kind of didn't, you know, do what they wanted, which was a certain you know, style because Sons had a style. That, that could be really true. But I also, I looked Mario up last night just for shits and giggles. He did a lot of one-offs because he was oh. so busy acting, so busy producing. He did a lot of one-offs on, in TV early in the Sons mm. years. So that, that could have been his choice as well, right? So now, now we get to the Jax Tara scene. She's frazzled. Yeah. Um, and and this is an interesting time with Jax. He is very clear and the agenda and the lie. Like he's very clear and it's almost, I guess like the sociopathic behavior is a survival mechanism. Like 
He's just like, what are you talking about? He never got off the plane. He never this. And it's not like- It was so oh, good. It's not like I just killed somebody. No, and it, and it wasn't like him going, hey, baby, keep it down. I fucking burned him. We're never going to yeah. see him. No, no. He literally had me believing that he just never got on the plane, man. He just, you know, he's, it's amazing. he's running. He's on the run. Chicago didn't want him back. He's on the run. Let's play baseball tonight. You ready to go for cards? Like, honestly, beautifully done. That's, that's, it's beautifully done. And, you know, I know it's for the protection of her, but it was amazing. So now we go to the Donna Opie scene. Um, oh, what, again, this is such a great time. episode for Opie. Uh, it's such a great episode um, for him. I'm not saying the episode as a whole yet. I'm not there yet. But I am starting to think that it's a little better than I thought. Um, he's trying. No, 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 Theo. I, you're right. No, I didn't. There are some certain scenes in the actual show that, again, are pivotal in the this of Sons of Anarchy. Pivotal. But the show as a whole was a rest. We're just going to rest on this show yeah. compared to what we've seen, I think. That's all. Yeah. And, and I think when you come hot and heavy off what we saw last time, especially I, I, what I think is one of the best episodes we've ever done. Yeah, crazy. Uh, yeah, crazy. Okay. So he's trying super hard. He can't win. We've all been behind it, right? They're both right. This is the thing when you're in an argument sometimes. They're both right. Yeah, She's right and he's right. That's true. And we've all been there. Like when you're both right, there's nowhere to go. It's I'm, like, ne okay, I'm never right, but thank you for putting <laughs> me into your family. Diana's yeah. always right. I'm never right, but I try. I try. Oh, Megan, Megan's <laughs> always right. You know, I just try to pretend that I'm right. <laughs> and I'll do a really good job of pretending that I'm right. I'll take it to the grave. I'm like oh, pretending. Good at it. You're good at it. Yeah. Yeah. So now they're both right. Um, I love seeing this different side of Opie, right? We didn't get to see. He became, again, stoic, quiet. This was like, he's, you can see, like, it, he's twisted up inside. Like, he just got out of the joint. He just got out. Like, he just doesn't know what to do. So I love seeing well that. Well put. Well and, put. Yeah. And again, he said it like it is. He's like, I'm trying. You asked for money. This is it. You knew I was going to go back. I'm not your brother. I'm not this. I'm not that. And, and I think that if we all could take a lesson here, it seemed like Opie and Ryan did such a great job of this, was very in touch with who he was. It's kind of like Tig. Tig, yeah. Tig was like this. Juice yeah, was all I over agree. the place. I agree. When you become unapologetic of who you are in life, like I'm getting this as I get older and today being your birthday, you understand this is, do you remember that? Um, you remember when you were younger, you might not be sure of things that like, do I like this? Am I like this? Do I feel like this? Now, as I get older, I'm like, like I very easily can say no to things. Someone's like, Hey, you want to go to this party at this person's house? I'm like, no, they're like, why not? It's going to be great. I said, no. Right. Because I know I don't like that kind of stuff. Right. I think that Opie was very clear. Ryan was very clear and Opie was very clear in who he was. Tig was very clear in who he was. Not many other characters on that show were very clear in who they wow, were. Very interesting. Really interesting. Yeah. Right. Interesting. Very interesting. And I do. I think the end of it, that's really, really well put. And I think at the end of this scene, they are both leaving. It's a sad moment because I really feel that these two are sadly because of the kids that Opie wants to reconnect with, that Don is trying to, you know, he's got no money coming in. What's he doing fixing, but there's no money coming in. Go back to chopping wood. And he goes, no, I'm not doing that anymore. You knew me, you know me, this is who I am. And if you can't, if you can't dig with that, then you can keep packing. I mean, I'm going to see my kids. I'm going to see my kids. I'm like going to you go do what you got to do with the information I just gave you. Right, right. And I, I'm just, it's a very uh, oh, sad ending too. Uh, yeah. I know. And again, here we are. We're putting money in that bank for when we're going to make that deposit later. What, what happens with Donna, which we all yeah. know about, right? We're going to get to that thing, which yeah. is incredible. Okay. So Cherry and Gemma have this talk. This is pretty amazing. This scene, regardless of the faux grocery shopping. Um, I didn't have no idea the reader thing. You would no. ask me that question. No. If you would have asked me a no. hundred times, I wouldn't. No. Know. No. 
Okay. Nope. She's in trouble. Um, I also didn't realize how big of a part I've worked with Taryn before. I've told you this a bunch Ugh. of times. I never I, realized I dig how her so big much. She's amazing. She's, she's an amazing so actress. good. She's a mini freaking Gemma. Yeah. She's a mini freaking Gemma. Yeah, and I didn't know a, that until I started watching these shows that she really. And Gemma sees it in the scene, sees that she's a mini her, right? So here's my thing. I didn't, I, I guess I didn't know how big of a part of the show Cherry was. I didn't realize that. Um, and to your point, that was where Adam, there was a moment with the Johnny Lewis character, with the half sack character, they were trying to figure it out. All yeah. the building blocks were trying to be figured out. And I'm telling you right now, bro, Tara Manning was going to be part of those, those building blocks. I know. And now that I'm seeing these shows, uh, you picked up on it. It's true. And it just didn't go that way. I know. And it's so funny. This is why this job we do is so maddening because you can, something can happen with someone else that affects your trajectory in this business. You know, I was, I'll never forget. I was doing this movie, man. I was so excited to get it. I was super young. I was doing this movie Cloverfield, right? Baby, you're a baby. That, that, that baby. movie freaked me out. Too much camera movement. I, Too much. Know. People, yeah, they would put signs outside Amazing, the theater because people would get sick. Right. And it was you're a vertigo. weird movie. It was a weird movie. It was 2005, I think we filmed it. And I was so excited. It was on the Paramount lot. It was all green screens. Biggest film I'd ever done. And the person, the the actress who was playing my girlfriend, because everybody was in these couples, you know, speaking a better half. Correct. It was in these couples. But we were going to do something that had never been done. J.J. Abrams and Matt Reeves. We're going to do something that had never been done. We were going to film the trailer before we filmed the movie. And the trailer was going to be filmed in New York. And we were all in L.A. And something happened where the girl who was playing my girlfriend, because we were all coupled up, couldn't go to New York and do the trailer, which meant I couldn't go, my character, which greatly affected the way my character played out in the film, where it wasn't as big. Wow. Wow. Right. And and you never and, told me that story. Wow. Right. It's but it's so bizarre because again, I was too young to even know what was going on, but and no one knew because there really wasn't scripts. It was kind of all happening on day. Everything was very like clandestine and, and quiet. Like we didn't know what the monster looked like. We didn't know any of this stuff, but it was so bizarre because again, I don't know what the situation was, why she couldn't go, or what happened, something to do with working papers or the union or something, but then it affects my character, right? Now, when you think about this show, who knows what Cherry could have been? Maybe Cherry yeah. could have been a Gemma type character. Maybe she could have been a Tara type character. Maybe, and who knows? And we now know because we've already finished season three. When Sherry shows back up in season three, we now know yeah. where she went when she when DL takes her up north. I mean, now we know. So right, it's go. just so. But it's so it's Bizarre. so odd how one thing leads to another. So here's the thing: um, Saul and Gemma are going okay, at it. I'm I'm gonna I, please I, go I, in on this because it's incredible. it's incredible. Okay, so for the first time that I can remember watching this show. That this scene with Stahl and Gemma are obviously two heavyweights in the acting world. They've Oof. known each other forever in real life. They're in a grocery store. A cop. It's a title got, fight. A That's cop a title just fight. got smacked by Cherry and she's bleeding. And 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 Allie just walks right over top of her and goes, "Nice, nice work." And then the two of them. I I, I thought for the first time ever with all these sexual innuendos too that they kept throwing at each other. Yep. This is like a soap opera. Like this yeah. is like, this scene is like a soap opera. It's a massively, I don't care if you're in Spanish, English, Italian, this was a very, very, with two women and they're soap opera out. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing or a good thing. I just thought, I don't even know what's going on right here with these two. I was like, okay. Obviously, we come to learn about Stahl's sexuality later down the road. We know Gemma's just, you know, down for whatever. Gemma's doing whatever. So there's all this sexual tension added into this yeah. aggressive tension of them being on polar opposite sides of the, the war, if we're going to yeah. call it. That's sure. the, they're on different teams. Sure. And the scene was riveting. 
if yeah. for me, because again, we're still getting used to stall. She's the early, she's early the days, enemy. baby. And again, we have another person who's basically telling her to go fuck off, right? We have, and it's happening and, a lot in this show for poor Allie Walker. Yep. Yeah. So then now we go right from there into stall grilling Rita, aka, you know, Cherry. And that's another. So stall is having this defining episode of her character. Like this is the one you got to point to where it goes. We, this is how we know who agent June stall is this yeah. episode. Um, and, and Taryn, you know, does what a lot of people do. I've done more, you know, you've probably done more of these. I've done more, uh, questioning scenes, interrogation scenes, for lack of a better word. Um, I feel like I did that my whole first 10 years of my career. You? And you're always playing it cool. No, what are you talking about? No, I didn't do anything. And then when they leave, your eyes drop and you're like, oh, they know. <laughs> it's the go-to move in interrogation scenes. Uh, watch any Law and Order. Watch any Chicago PD. That's what they do. Perlman, Perlman did it on this show when he got inter interviewed by Stahl. He had that when she leaves moment and they're both like boxing with each other. And he's got this moment of, holy fuck. I'm yeah. It's, I think it's just in the handbook of interrogation scenes. It is. You take a deep, let the breath out when the person leaves the room. <sighs> <laughs> Which also lets the audience know they're guilty. Yeah. Right? <laughs> what a silly, to silly, tell. silly thing. I love it. Um, okay. So uh, I'm not in episode. I'm not in this episode. I hated it. I got to tell you, you're going to go to the answer table. sitting in my chair. Just stop. Let me, let me, let me, let me take it. Please. I remember very little about this, Sean. Who cares? I, I enjoyed every moment that I had. And that's the truth. I actually remember this day. And I'm going to tell you why. Please tell. I remember we, we were up against it. We were up against time. We were up and everyone had some words to say. And I remember Mary just going, okay, you sit there, you sit there. And I just remember thinking, what the fuck is happening? Why is Halfsack even at the table? He's a prospect. You don't get to sit mm. there yet. You sit against the wall. And Anza's at the table? Like, what, what is... And, and, and people don't realize that that's all for camera filming. Like, yes, we're very, we were all very aware of who should be at the table and who shouldn't. So before and, all the bikers go crazy, we were aware. Oh no, Camera we, we all knew. didn't care. And, and I wrote it down. If you literally look at our faces again, if you want to watch the show again, the energy had been zapped out of us. Mm -hmm. Me, Charlie, Perlman. Not because we didn't like what we were doing or what we were going to try and do, but just it got we got bamboozled with time, bamboozled with someone's sitting there in fact i remember johnny getting up out of that chair so quick when who walked in someone walked in was it Bob? someone walks in and he just pounces out of the fucking chair mm. wasn't you anyway and then you know it's funny at the end where Ansa rises it raises his hand and goes i'll i, I can i vote you know it's classic it's classic. a classic classic move so it saves the scene there's a couple of things i noticed about the scene one chibs is sleeveless which was really interesting he oh, used to do that a lot good for tommy chibs chibs used to be sleeveless first season um and then Jax is trying to bring opie in the fold because we can tell that he's kind of on the way out Jax is trying to pull him Correct. in um answer putting up his hand at the end to vote it just saved the whole scene scene saves the entire scene yeah. um Okay, so Let's we go to on. this stall auto scene. Um, I, and I know, I know you, I know you knew this. Um, I forgot this, but Otto and Luann, like Otto, it was Luann. He has it's all about a Luann. Tattoo all over his arm. Even Mario focused in on his. At the end of the scene, we went right to the mm -hmm. tattoo. Mm -hmm. It was all about his Let's better see. half. His Let's better see. half. Okay. How do yeah. you maintain these curls? No, no, I, yeah, no. You're you're killing it, son. You're killing it. Um, in fact, I'm about to play a guy. This hair's going to grow in the facial out. hair back. No, it's oh. all going. It's all going. Um, you got to shave all, that every day. All I can say is it has to do with a gardening center. Hysterical. Hysterical. But Hysterical. with some weird dark shit too. It's going to be fun to play. Anyway, your hair is incredible. 
Keep shaking so, the video. Okay, so stall and auto. Um, yeah. You know, again, this is how many times have we seen auto once? Sure. Okay. Who cares? Um, Jackson, Donna are back in the room. <laughs> Who really cares? Does it matter? I don't even know why I asked that. It's such a silly okay. question. Um, <laughs> Jackson, Donna back in the room. Um, think, uh, no, not Jackson, Donna, Tara. right? Tara, Jackson, Tara sorry. at the Jackson, house. Jackson, Tara back in, back the, in room. the room. Yeah. I think I would have had to maybe sleep in another room for a little while. Yeah. Or at least, I don't know. I don't no, know no, if I no, could no, comfortably no, no. move into a room that someone was just murdered in. No, that was just an incredible thing. And I think what Kurt wanted to do with this scene is it really, you really felt their past in this scene. All of it. When they were kids, high school, leaving when Jack, Jax was 19, she was 19. You felt they knew each other so well back in the day. And now they're like, do we, do we go for this? Are we going to go for this? They just killed a man together that needed to go. I'm sorry he did. Uh, but that's why they're in that room because we, we as an audience got to see how incredibly tight those two were when they were growing up. So now we come up to what I think is the best scene in the show. Again, not just because my favorite characters are in it. Um, the bar scene. Yeah. What amazing writing. What uh, played incredibly well the plan was great again don't remember any of this i'm not even sure they gave me the script for this episode um what where were you guys is that a set or you're at a real bar no no we were at, we were at uh telemora we were at no no we were at uh we they built the set they built the set right there and in, in our studio a lot of people in that a lot, lot, lot of people lot, and I, I i i go i recognized every stunt man in hollywood like it, <laughs> when i went to the one table and Pliny went to the other table we knew all of them we knew all of them because it was going to be a big ass barroom fight uh look for me what i forgot was a very tig type thing he wasn't afraid of anybody or any woman to touch them to hug them to stay away from them he, 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 he wanted to smell them or not. Piney, I get really close to Piney. I put my arm all over him. I almost kiss him. I'm playing with his oxygen. And I know William Lucking, it was very, uh, he's such a good actor that he wouldn't have played it that way. If he was Tig, he wouldn't have done it that way. But he found it so weird and so wacky. And his, 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 his reactions were so real that we kept it all in because it turned out to be really funny. Is that when you're saying when you're turning up the oxygen? Yeah, no, it's, I, I'm saying, I'm saying stuff like, you know, like that. You get high off this? You get, yeah, like that, um, what was that famous movie? I might've even mentioned it in the scene where uh, Dennis Hopper is breathing that, 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 you know, they- Easy breathe. Rider? No, no. Oh, Waterworld? No, no, I did Waterworld with him. No, when he, when he did that movie, um, I think he got nominated for an, an Oscar. He was breathing this shit in. Uh, it's a very strange. Blue Helium? Velvet. Blue Velvet. Oh, Blue Velvet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Blue yeah. Velvet. And so I just wanted to know, is it a Blue Velvet thing with you? Was it like, you know, you're getting high off of this shit? And it was, uh, and Bobby's just like, this is what I deal with every day, man. Like, Oh, I loved it. it again, funny. we get to like see the characters again. And you know, we've always talked about this, the life of the characters outside of, we need money. We need guns. Yeah. Are we flush? Are we whole? Yeah. Like when you see outside of them, like just something outside of who they are, it's so important. Um, so it's a great scene. Then we go to Unser Jack's Opie plotting outside the police station. This is so funny to me because it's such a great setup for Unser. Uh, I remember none of this. Jax is showing he doesn't trust Opie fully. Why? One, so why did that happen? What, what did I miss when I was reading yeah, these So I'm scripts? a little confused there. I'm a little yeah, confused. I, I was really confused, Theo, because we just had a scene where he's going, no, no, Ope's coming with me. Ope's going to be with me. And now all of a sudden he's going, Ope, you stay here. You stay here. Why? I, that, I don't know why. I don't, that was just a weird thing to me. Yeah, that might have, maybe that just was like something they did. I don't know why. Why bring him then? That, that's, that's my point exactly. We'll let, okay. the peeps, we'll let the peeps weigh in on that. All right, keep going. So Cherry has good. a great scene with him in the jail. Um, and Fuck. 
Great scene. Well, she's so good. Great fucking acting. When she goes, I'm gonna rap. I'm gonna. I know me. I'm gonna rap. Great. How honest is great. that? Great. Great acting. Great scene. Um, Unser's response Catch is the <laughs> fucking whole show. Can't you just let me be a cop for a minute? Can't you pretend? She goes, Aren't you the police chief? Yeah. <laughs> he goes, I don't know what I am. I don't, I don't know, know what I am. I don't know what I am. Oh my God. And then Jack's walking in on stall and hell. I totally forgot about yeah, that. Well, Taylor was lifting some serious iron before that scene. serious iron he was jacked out of his mind and uh, uh yeah. definitely doing push-ups before the scene um and jacked. i forgot jacked. about that scene great ready to great. go great. so that's that's a really great um scene so here's what's funny i noticed about the next scene oh come on i know you what you're gonna say the I gotta artwork on the police sketches is unreal who did those salvatore mm -hmm. dolly i i have no idea no Those idea. were the greatest sketches. Ever. No, ever. Whoever that eyewitness is is related to both Opie and Bobby and had had For wallet sure. size photos. And they were there. They were there that day and they had a little, you know, a little awning. And they had easel. Thing, easel. That's the word I'm looking for. A little easel. What the and they were sketching. Fuck? Really good. What really good? I mean, first of all, kudos to the artist. Um, but there's non kudos really. non to the special <laughs> effects department because those fucking pictures are like literally Basquiat's like yeah. can't have that. it was ridiculous okay so um auto scene with Luann he still doesn't know and he gives I'm, I'm sorry it's the auto scene with uh Saul he gives her the scene no, 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 you're right. It's like Otto and Luann have a scene. Right. And and it's really kind of confusing for me as a viewer because I don't know what Otto is really up to mm -hmm. at this moment. I mean, I, I kind of figured out how the episode ended from this scene. Do you scene. think he knew, but do you think he knew early he was going to do that? Do you think it was after she told him about the Rico? I think it was after she told him about the Rico. Yeah, but before that, you think he was going to cooperate? I, I, that's why I, it's all, it's all, you know, this is what Kurt did so freaking well. Where's he going to go? What's he really meaning? What's he thinking? What are we to, what are we led to believe? I, I, I really did not know at the end of this scene, what, what Otto was up to. I really didn't. Yeah. That's interesting. I would love to know what people think about that. If they think uh, the people who watch these episodes, like we do, I would love to know if they think Otto knew the whole time of what he was, he was going not to do. Cooperate. Yeah. That yeah. He was or he changed his mind. I'd love to know. Or yeah. he changed, or he was gonna, for lack of a better word, rat or whatever. And I hate that term because. Well, and I and I didn't I like mention rats. this earlier, but I we've never used this term more than in this show. That word is said forty seven times that word. in this show, all, all over the show. I hate anything where, maybe it's because I love animals so much. This is so weird. I hate anything where you demean an animal for a human behavior. I know that sounds weird. And that's okay, because I'm a weird dude. Um, I think You're very that, weird, like, dude. Yeah, like why? What's wrong with a rat? He's just out here trying to survive, like we are. Why are we now saying that a rat is a person who does they're, something? They're, they're a bit of a pain in the ass. But, but until, until, we get to, until we get to season five, six, and seven, when Nico comes on. But do we know bit. rats are distrustful? Does anybody know rat? Like pretty, I, I have they're friends. Pretty good at their job. They're right. pretty good at the job. They're they survivors. Give, they, they don't give a fuck about anybody. I'll tell they're you. They're survivors. <laughs> give them credit. They're, they're into it for themselves. No, I mean, they're all over New York. 22 they're... comes in handy with me and a rat from the farm. Sorry, I'm a Saskatchewan. Come boy. on, rats, no. mouses. Like, no. give them a break. What are some of the other animals? All the animals we de we demean when we talk. What do we Raccoons. call people? Jackass. Raccoons. Raccoons. Jackass. Jackass. You bet. You jackass. You call somebody a dog. You're a dog. What's wrong? I love dogs. Are you kidding me? They're Oof. my whole life. I love dogs. You call someone a dog. That's offensive, right? <laughs> yeah. This yeah, is ridiculous. it is ridiculous. We need to stop this. Right now, we're going to stop this. Right now. We're going we're gonna to bleep out any, every time someone says rat on this show, we're going to bleep it out from now on. Yeah, we should call them something as like, we should be like, oh, he's distrustful. <laughs> he's yeah. distrustful. Yeah. Oh, no, you don't like, you yeah, know, no animals. No we animals. People no, animals. no animals. No animals. We're changing this. Okay. Okay. So 
Otto Luan scene, um, we see that now. Sack and Cherry are in bed. Again, yeah. we've touched on this multiple times. Obviously, it was going to be a bigger storyline. Gemma gets to do the door scene because Juice isn't there. Some... All right? Which means the knock. You hey. know what? <laughs> that should have yeah. been Juice. Come on, ready to yeah. go. That would go. Me. If I was in the episode, that is a juice line and scene. No, no. In fact, no one wanted to take it from you. No we one wanted you to that. have all of them. And they'll call you in like just for the, you'll look at the schedule. They'll be like, "Oh, I'm working Wednesday. What am I doing? I, oh, that's it. So I'm gonna go. Oh, I'm going through makeup and all. Oh, that's it. Just that. Oh, okay. I guess I'll be home for lunch. <laughs> oh God, that's great. So, um, stall going over the auto letter. Yeah, one more thing, though. Hang on, I got to mm -hmm. talk about Sherry and Half Sack for one second. Yeah, please. Because this is such a Shakespearean-themed show in many, many ways, and I know that I know Shakespeare, you know, better than you. Way better. Uh, but I will say that that scene reminded me of Romeo and Juliet so much because mm. when Romeo and Juliet do the clandestine getting married, they're in bed, then they say goodbye, I'll see you in a week, and they never see each other again mm -hmm. until the ending of the of the play when they're both going to die in this scene you can't tell me for one second that they didn't think that somewhere down the road she's just going up north i will see you again never again will these two little lovebirds see each other that's the yeah truth. that's both heartbreaking in so many ways and again it goes back to the what if right yeah um as someone who reads marvel comics back in yeah. the day pre all these crazy movies and all that back when it was just comics um yeah. they used to do a comic called what if i think they're going to do them now on disney plus they're going to do wow. a show and the what ifs are great because like it's what if this happened it'd be fun to do that with like sons like what if yeah man oh i'd watch it around or i'd watch it this happened yeah, it'd be pretty cool. That's where that fan fiction, I know we were talking about it the other day, and of course somebody started it already, is I said, I wonder what Jax, uh, Hale, and Tara were like in high school. And I think somebody actually started oh, writing the fan No, I fiction. bet that, they did. Yeah, that would be a It'll fun be little everywhere. thing to see. Um, you know, you call it like, it would be like an eight episode TV show and you call it Charming. Yeah. It would just be about, <laughs> what would that be? Like the 80s and them in high school. Please, I mean, like a freaks and geeks type story. I'd there, be man. into that. That'd oh, be fun. God, yeah. Okay. So, Tara checking in on Cami at the cabin. Yeah, we're almost Everyone's there. We're leaving. almost at the end. Here we go. We're going into our montage music. Yeah. Um, everyone's leaving. Yeah. They want to pack everybody into that scene. Um, I thought, and again, I'm a self proclaimed idiot. I have no idea what happens in the show. I'm like, oh, this is the way it's going to end. It's going to end on a nice note because we have ended some things on a nice note. A few and times. I was like, Not too it's many, going but to a end few. on a nice note. They're going to all get on. Cherry's going to say goodbye to, to Half Sack and Jackson. I'm going to ride off and they're going to probably close on either Tara's face of dis, of not of distrust of what's happening. But no, we go back to auto install. And now I started going, oh, shit. I remember something happens here. Yeah. Um, this is the moment yeah. Stahl becomes the ultimate enemy. Yeah. This is it. Right? And yeah, and but Kurt takes it a step further in in saying that if you think that the biker life that the Sons of Anarchy are just a little club down the street, wait a second. Otto is gonna slam her face, trying to kill her, trying, trying to, to bust her. her. Like, we're going to be so viciously violent if you try and fuck with me or my club, but this is what's going to happen to you, baby. And she comes running into that where it's all done. She doesn't die. Her nose is shattered. Her teeth are completely fucked up. Done. And someone tries to help her and she goes, get away from me. Yeah. And she comes right in and she says that beautiful line of, I'm going to bury this club. So... See, this is season one. Mm -hmm. This is the 10th episode. And now the viewers get to go, okay, so we don't like her. We don't like her. We, li we don't like her. But now with that, we're going to keep her for a while because this is not going to end well for somebody. 
because she's not going away and she never did go away. No, she need, she might need oral surgery first. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to need a lot of oral surgery and it happens yeah, very crowns. quickly. It yeah. happens very quickly. She might have broke a crown. She might. I know. I know something happened to her teeth, and definitely something happened to her schnoz. And if that was me or you with these noses, oh, never going to be the same. <laughs> I'll look even better if something like yeah, that happened. You would. It would fix it. Um, <laughs> listen, like in Home Alone, when he fixes his nose. Um, you know, listen. I'll tell you. I don't. I. I think it was a quieter episode, um, at, except for the end. I think it that it was a setup episode and I don't know what putting this done. away, putting this away putting until next away. week. So wait, um, what are we doing next week? Um, I'm going to tell you right now. Yeah, please we're going to, we're going to announce someone. Now we're, we're going to announce someone. someone next week. Yep. Uh, Cause we're definitely going to get someone on in a couple of weeks here. All right. So now little brother. Yeah. What do we got left? Holy cow. We only have, two more shows to do in season one what are they we are the one directly finishing this one or directly following this one 11. episode 11 that's next week guys next episode week episode 11 season one Go and ahead. then on the finale of episode one episode 13 of, of season one episode 13 we're gonna have a guest on holy Oh, so we're going to have Rimini. our guests for the finale. That's How? amazing. That, no, it's just going to go right through the whole rocket oh, ship. Boom. That's amazing. Shaka so, so listen, here we are for Kim's birthday. If you're seeing this video, subscribe. It makes him happy. Yeah. Um, subscribe below. Share it with your friends and anyone else. You know, yep. spread love. Spread love. It's the Reaper way. Spread love. Um, and, uh, and we'll see you next week for season one episode 11 and correct we'll announce our guest correct and uh that's it let's all uh holy cow we did it happy we did another birthday one. to you happy yeah. birthday yeah. to you yeah, yeah thanks see yeah. that i Stop hit the saying. note <laughs> i uh i appreciate you and i love you i appreciate and love you to and meg I love and the you. boys and yes, i'll say the same to die and my girls please and i'll i'll Sp see you spread soon the love oh by the way Look at our names on this. <laughs> I can I do that it. with your help. Always with your help. Look at your hair. I know it's amazing. No, and it's I love amazing, that you just son. hit a little note there just to Keep show it me up. on your birthday. Get out of here. I love you. Get out. Love of here. you more. See you, buddy. Bye. Bye.